Anybody who's ever thrown for any length of time knows that you're going to hit highs and lows. Nick Ponzio is no exception. We talk about in this clip some of those highs and lows of his senior year when he was the national leader, but how did we get out of those low points? Find out in this clip. Check it out. What I remember is it was like you had thrown, and that was right, you had thrown well, yeah. and then you were like trending down. Yeah. And anybody who knew, especially young Nick Ponzio, knows once Nick is frustrated, that is a very <laughs> difficult, like, we got to turn that around, and that's like, so I can see, you know, you know, and uh, yeah. I remember we did our first training session. We had this small gym, and we had this underground parking lot for people who, who kind of aren't familiar. We had this parking garage, which actually worked out great because we had this like 13 foot high cinder block wall in the parking structure. And we came in and we did your first training session. And I want to say two days later, you did the Tribuco Hills meet. Yeah. And, and then I think you had like six throws over 60 feet. Yeah. It was like five, five like or back, six. Yeah. Yeah. It was like back, back into like the, upper echelon of of, of right. my throat so i think you had pr'd it was nothing big but i think the deal was it was the you know we i think we had literally trained two times we cleaned up a couple of things real fast yeah. you know which was you know I, I will plug of course the the throwing chain reaction <laughs> that was the early yeah. days because we launched the tcr online your senior year of high school that year yeah. was the year we used so the first thing we fixed was your setup your start we made you understand that and i remember going to that meet and we had to keep it on the down low, right? Nobody knew we were like training, yeah. but I was there and I filmed it. And I think, and you had five of the six throws over. And I think your, your other throw was like 59 or something. It was 59 yeah. and change or something. Right around the same mark for sure. It was a yeah. really big day. And I, I, now that you bring that up, that was a distinctive day. Now that I look back on it, um, cause that was a really big, a really big day, um, for kind of like moving into the rest of the season, just being like, okay, I'm back into like, you know, the swing of things and being right. like, okay, reassurance, you know what I mean? Being, yeah, being kind sure. of like, a and so, you know, I think, so that was good. And then I think we hit, you know, 61s and some 62s and like, you were just consistently getting better. Then we had the coaching controversy. Then we took a little bit of a break, which was short, like maybe 10 days. Your parents were like, bullshit, we're coming down. Well, okay, so but we got we got to make a point here because I this is this is the time. What I remember about, about taking the break was that Arcadia and Mount Sac were both in that 10 day period. Mm, yeah, that's true. And Arcadia and Mount Sac, when I look back on that, like my senior year was like the biggest letdowns of, of my career. Like they just, I, I went to those meets. I hadn't worked with you in a while. I was working just with my coaches and I was really kind of frustrated with the whole thing going on. And I fouled out of both disc and That's shot. Right. I fouled out of both. And I was like, Oh my God, this like, cause you know, back then, th I mean, there's still big, big time meets for high school kids. But back then those were huge. Like, those, those were like going throughout the country and everything like that. Yeah. We had people coming around the around. Like, I remember I met Val Almond for the first time at, at that meet back in, 2012 she was still like living in colorado and i met some really big names back then that are now really big throwers and it was just those were big time meets and i remember that was like so dramatic and i remember you were at i believe it was arcadia and i hadn't seen you in a while because that was the second i think it was mount sack first and then arcadia and you were like i remember I, I i just remember sitting in a chair being like oh my god i just fouled out of four straight competitions <laughs> that were huge for my like i you know I, I looked at them like these were huge for my, my college career too like i i have to be able to do this for, to propel myself to the schools i want to go to and get uh, the scholarship i want to get and i remember you looked at me at the chair and you were like we got to get back to work buddy and i remember i was like all right i'm, <laughs> I'm going like because i talked to my dad on the way home i was like i'm going back there like i could care less like i really could care less i was like i, I told my dad i was like if it comes down to it i'll throw unattached like i'll just throw in like open meets and stuff like i don't care i'm just i, I need to get to a point where I, I can get to the level that I need to get. I remember me and my parents, not only that, like we had a really long conversation at the table and they were like, Hey, there's a good possibility that like, they may actually kick you off the team. And I just remember being like, I just, I, I don't, I don't care anymore. Like, <laughs> it, I, and it, mm. this goes back to talking about with me and my stubbornness back then. It was just kind of, I would have done. And I, to this day, I probably still do that with most, <laughs> most of my life, but I would have done anything. And, um, back, back then it might, may have come a little more long winded than it would now, but it, yeah, I would have done anything back then to, to be where I, where I wanted to get to. Yeah, no. And then, and then I remember we put it back on track and, uh, which kind of, you know, 
I was going to do the diddle, diddle, the Wayne's World, right? The flashback. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I remember standing at the studio. We had gotten things back on track. Things were moving. And then you called and it was like, hey, coach, guess how far I threw. Yeah. And it yeah. was like, it's and it was big. And I was like thinking he went. He went 65 or 66, which would have been, you know, big throw. And, yeah. you, were, and you go 69, seven and a quarter. <laughs> right. And I was like, yes, I was just like so fired up. Yeah. And uh, and then kind of the rest was history. The rest of the season, you just dominated. Kelsey had come up that year. You guys were going one, two. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the yeah, Kelsey was going two, 63 all the time. I think you maybe. I don't remember what his PR was. I think it was like 64 or something. He his threw, his but PR he... was 62.6. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so he, he was, going... was 61, 62 pretty consistently. Yeah. yeah. And, and he, again, was a 45 foot shot putter the year before. And now he was sure. a consistent 60 footer, first year yeah. rotator. Yeah. Um, you, you were like crushing it. And then just every meet, your discus was going. You went to state, you dominated that. And then you and I went to uh, junior nationals together. And yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, yeah, That's we, right. And uh, I and completely, I, uh, yeah. yeah. I remember. So, and you had unfortunately you hit some good throws, but you just like just barely were fouling them. You were just yeah. a little forward, and yeah. Um, but well, it was also kind of the things I just you know I had never done any training with any heavy ball up until that point. Like we never really worked with the six k or anything. We kind of stuck with lighter balls when yeah. I was younger. So that was I remember distinctly that. Um, being a big issue. I remember feeling like I couldn't really push the ball and, you know, being where I'm at now and, and looking back on that, it probably was just towards the end of my, like my body's tank. Like I just probably just didn't have much left after, after that entire year.